We've been there, then uh, they wanted to do this genetic research to find out whether any of the kids carried her, the same uh, gene that she carried or whatever. So they wanted blood, so they came and they asked permission to uh, draw blood from her children. A doctor and a nurse came to the house and had all of us there. The blood test they did on us, they took blood tests from each one of the kids, each one of my mother's kids, and they told us that they just tested it to see if what my mother had was hereditary. I said, you're working on her cells? And he said, yeah, he said, her cells are still alive. And I just, you know how you, I was just truly amazed. And he said he'd been working on it for years. And it like took us by surprise. We never knew this. And there's another thing that got me upset with him, like, is there anything else I don't know? <laughs> and it can get scary when you think about it. I mean, how much of ourselves is out there, you know? The new technology of gene mapping gave geneticists a feeling of power and confidence. They became convinced that they would find the cause of cancer. They would open up the cell and isolate the cancer genes. And yet again, Hollywood became involved. The stars turned out to fund the scientists who offered a new promise. They would find the cancer genes and then repair or replace them. And cancer would be cured. What you're here to support tonight is something that is somewhat of a new approach to try and identify and understand the basic mechanisms that change, change a normal cell into a malignant cell. And then once we understand these mechanisms, to try and direct our therapy specifically at those alterations. Well, their view of the world is that if I knew the sequence of a gene, I would know what it does. And if I know what it does, then I'll be able to replace its faulty operation by giving it something else. And so people give them lots of money, they give them their faith, they believe in them, they hope in them, because they're going to save me by screwing around with your genes. And if cancer could be cured, one could make a great deal of money. The new biotechnology firms, which grew up in the 80s, seized on the promises being made by the scientists. The scientists said to the capitalists, we now have a technology that's going to enable us to cure cancer. And it was more than hope. It was a belief. And it fostered the biotechnology industry. I mean, if it was possible to conquer cancer, you're probably talking about the largest market in the world. And remember, all human beings are equal. There's almost no other products outside of bullets that work on all people equally. And so suddenly there was an opportunity to make a lot of money. They're profiting off of her while her family remains ignorant of all the things about her. Because they've taken the cells and used it without permission. They have also distributed without permission. Does they, she belong to the family? And uh, they also have research, you know. And one reason because this, this is a family matter. Thank you. Uh, okay. oh, sell it. Sell it to Sell it to 5,000 Genetech. The Lax family began to learn more about what had been done with their mother's cells. They decided to approach lawyers to see if they could claim some of the money. I went to the lawyers because I wanted to find out what is happening with her cells. From my research, I found out that they're selling her cells all over the world. And I just wanted to find out who is making money off my mother's cells. I was kind of angry about it or mad about it in a way because it was something that no one knew, no one knew about. The lawyers approached most of the major biotechnology and pharmaceutical companies. Everywhere they were turned away. It seemed they had no legal case. Henrietta Lacks had died too long ago. Faced by this, the Lacks family decided that if they couldn't win any money, they would fight for recognition for their mother. They began a campaign which was picked up by radical yeah. black magazines. Now we got a lot of pictures of, of, around here like this, around the market, up John Hopkins Hospital. We just want to make them aware of who she was. The reason why 
I think they're not trying to acknowledge it. It's because she's black, I think if it was the other way around, if she's a white female, I think they would have been knowledge and they, know, they would know who she is right now. The Lacks family became convinced that their mother's death somehow represented a kind of heroism. It had been a sacrifice by a black woman for the rest of the world. The most famous woman in the world in medical history, the only woman in the medical history that holds this title, you know, to me, I don't think they want blacks to hold that title. But the promise of finding a cure for cancer is yet again beginning to fade. By the early 90s, scientists had identified many genes associated with cancer. But these genes are only one part in a complicated sequence of events that lead to cancer. The human body is far more complicated than scientists thought. The public optimism is giving way to a new skepticism. We don't have a single case, not a single case, where a knowledge of the DNA sequence of a gene has led to a treatment for the disease. Knowing all the genes in the human genome is in itself not information on how the human body works. If you want to know how the human body works, you have to look at the proteins, the cell organelles, the machinery of the body as a whole. The DNA information is not sufficient. The dream didn't happen. The dream of winning the war on cancer. The dream of making a lot of money did happen for a lot of people. The dream of finding ways to help some patients with cancer happened. But the dream to cure cancer has not and did not happen. Are we any nearer curing cancer than we were 50 years ago? No, certainly not. In particular cases, we are in better control of the conditions for chemical attacks on cancer, knowing exactly what chemicals to give. Lives are extended by either burning the cancer out or cutting it out or killing it with chemicals. And there are no other ways. And there are not likely to be. So is the promise of a genetic cure for cancer an illusion? Yes. It really is? Yes. I don't know what more to say. <laughs> Morehouse College in Atlanta is one of the oldest black universities in America. If my mother don't go, Last October, on the 45th anniversary of Henrietta Lacks's death, it honored her and her family. It was the culmination of their campaign for the recognition of their mother. The city of Atlanta acknowledges the contributions of Henrietta Lacks for advancing the medical and scientific efforts for cancer, polio, and many other diseases, and on behalf of the citizens of Atlanta, hereby proclaim October 11th as Henrietta Lacks Day in our city. Signed, William Campbell. The family now became celebrities. Would you give us some response on your, your emotional uh, comments at this time? Well, I, was, I think I was part of a miracle because when she was pregnant with me, she was dying of cancer. Oh. See, so the so, um, only little outcome I had of that, I stayed in the hospital a whole year with um, a spot of tuberculosis. Since then, um, I've been having a clean bill of health. And she had done, you know, tremendous miraculous uh, help for other people, you know, she deserved it. You know. As a result of the campaign, Henrietta Lacks has become a scientific heroine. But in reality, she has defeated science. For 45 years, scientists have struggled to understand her cells and cure cancer. But a growing number of scientists believe that even if they understood why Henrietta's cells grow and divide ceaselessly, they could not cure the disease there is a new pessimism in science. I can know the cause of lots of things. Uh, I know the cause of the tides, but I can't stop them. I know the cause of hurricanes, but I can't stop them. I know the current causes of death. And even if I can prevent some of the current causes of death, I cannot stop death. It's here to stay. All flesh is as the grass. <laughs>